You shot straight, but you shot late. High limit. This is the Rundown Podcast. I'm going to give you the rundown. I'm going to give you the rundown. I get that bag and don't feel what I make. You get that bag and just act like you straight. My pocket loaded, loaded, fill with dope. Slide on a hundred deep back to show. So, um, let everybody know, man, who you are, what you do, where you from. What's going on, man? I'm Peso Montana, straight out of Brockett Road, man. You know what the fuck going on. Uh, shit. You from what road? What's going on, Brockett Road. Brockett. By Strokers. Yeah, oh, okay, East Side. Hey. All right, so my boy Peso, tell me where you coming from. Uh, shit, bro, I'm coming from uh, Tucker, Georgia. How far is uh, Tucker from Atlanta? Just just for those who don't, you know what I'm saying, who don't know. Uh, shit, I want to say like 25, 30 minutes. Okay, okay. So do you feel like right now, um, you know what I'm saying, you like the only artist that's putting on putting on for Tucker and not, not really like claiming Atlanta? Uh, nah, not really. I'm just uh, one of the ones that got a popular Atlanta promoter and rapper is now headed to prison. Just found guilty of a woman. Lawrence Anarity, known as a as Peso Mantana, and a second man, Ryan Savage, you see them here on your screen, were sentenced to 50 years, tried together, and convicted of Tonight, the DeKalb County District Attorney confirms more potential victims have come forward, sharing similar stories of how they were assaulted. 11 Lives, Cody Alcorn has that story tonight. He's live in Atlanta. So, Cody, you say these reported as go back more than a decade. Ron, Jennifer, as far back as 2013, Peso Mont now Peso Montana and Ryan Savage would lure these women to a home in Stone Mountain by putting online ads for pre-tattoos out there. Well, what they would do next, them and... Them. Now tonight, you're about to hear from two women who responded to one of those ads. One of them was the other. We are protecting their identities tonight. I interviewed them over Zoom and we will not be identifying them. It wasn't about, it was more about power or humiliation or it's, it's, de it's deeper than that because they did it repeatedly. The advertisement. Their motive and their ammo is to get the girls to drink immediately. The women say these two continued pouring drinks. Said we was in and out. We was really. The next thing she knew. I hear my sister screaming like somebody even killed her. She'd been. I was hysterical. Pretty much I wanted to be in a safe place and call the police. So. I asked her to, you know, take me home. So I called the police from there and I went to go get a kit done at the cab medical that same morning. So what happened next? They didn't stop. He was start he started making music. Referring to Lawrence in a rarity known as Peso Montana. He was an Atlanta promoter for years. He was hosting parties, getting girls drunk and stuff for years, and nobody said anything. They fought a silent battle. If all those girls in my DM would have spoke up, would have actually like came forward and just talk, like, no, I'm not going for it. It's wrong. I was violated. I deserve to be heard. A decade later, Inner Rarity and Ryan Savage have finally been stopped, only tried for one rape, partially because of the statute of limitations. All these girls having the same story with the same couple of people and nobody paid attention to it. Now, both men were sentenced to life in prison, but will be eligible for parole after 50 years. And what is unknown tonight is just how many victims are out here across Metro Atlanta. The two women you just heard from believe there are many, many more victims. As you mentioned, Jennifer and Ron, the DA, has reached out to several more. What happens next? We'll soon find out. Of course, if you are a victim of one of these two men, you're asked to contact the DeKalb County Police Department. Say, man, hey, man, hey, man. It's OG Jacario, and I'm back at you with another one. And I had to come slide on the YouTube block about Lawrence and Rarity and Ryan Savage 
And that's just what these guys are. Some savages. Because over 11 years, these guys were getting away with lacing drinks just to steal the pink once these ladies were knocked out. And one of the victims came forward and said she was even young as 16 when she just wanted to get one of these free tattoos that were being advertised on internet as, you know, a party. And the 16 year old at that time even said that uh, she felt like, well, she was enticed to go by the free tattoo offering and even offered her friend to go with her. But her friend uh, backed out at the last minute and she was forced to go get this tattoo, right? By herself. But when she got to the party, Guess what? Well, I'll tell you later on in the story once we get to it. But this is how sick and demented and twisted these guys were. They're alluring these women to a house. Authorities are saying that they don't know how many victims are actually out there. But according to uh, court witnesses who were there doing the trial, they're saying that there were at least four to six girls that came forward you know, from the time of 2013 all the way up until now uh, that these men have been taken advantage of. Those are the ones that we do know of. But how many victims did Lawrence Interrarity and Ryan Savage uh, totally take advantage of in this whole time being of them pulling off these fiascos and stunts and sick old uh, uh, fantasies they had of women and uh, forcing themselves upon these victims unwilling. This 16 year old happened to be one of the victims of Peso Montana and one of those uh, that he was involved in with this young lady. She spoke out after the trial on social media and this is what she had to say. She said, back in 2013, in December of 2013, I was a homeless 16 year old. I had nowhere to go. So I was staying with friends. A friend of mine at the time showed me a flyer that advertised free tattoos, girls only. So me being young and dumb, I was excited to go. Who wouldn't want a free tattoo, right? All right. Well, my friend was supposed to go with me, but ended up backing out, but I still decided to go. I was dropped off by a friend and I attended the party alone. When I arrived there, it was about 16 age boys there. They reassured me that more people were coming and I had arrived kind of early. They offered me a drink and I accepted. Now she's 16 years old. This is what goes on and this is her story and I'm already seeing that she accepted a drink at 16. Check this out. She's saying that uh, that they offered her a drink. She said she accepted. Never saw them make the drink. Uh, they brought me the drink and I drank it. No more than five to ten minutes. I felt dizzy and lightheaded and I passed out. I couldn't move but I could hear everything. They were discussing taking advantage of this 16 year old's body. Wow, yikes. Now, check this out. They were fumbling with my pants, trying to get my sweatpants loose, but the string was in a knot. They got frustrated and continued to try and undo my pants. I threw up on myself and that caused them to get upset. They loaded me up in their car. They stole my phone and proceeded to dump me on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. Wow. I was located by a woman who then called the police and I was then interviewed. And after the interview, I was never followed up with. I never got any updates. That case sat for 11 years. And at that time, no one believed me. No one cared. A year ago, I was contacted by a DeKalb investigator. Another one of Lauren's victims came out to speak on the situation and she had a lot to get off her chest as well in a long text that she wrote on social media. She said this, 
I believe it was 2013 to 2014, I was invited to a tattoo party by my friend Lawrence in Stone Mountain. I was trying to get a tattoo covered, but it was on my ribs, so I was hurting. I take a shot, I watched them pour from a bottle that wasn't open, and they told me it would help with the pain. I take one shot and blacked out. A friend I am no longer cool with saved my life that night by dragging my body down the steps and locking me in the tattoo man's basement until the sun came up. But by that time she found me, it was too late. The tattoo man had already took advantage of my body, but I was so out of it, I couldn't move or feel my legs in my own throw up at that. Uh, that's a night I will never forget. I never told any police because I was scared. I never even knew they were going to trial. My friend that invited me, I have known since I was in middle school. So when I confronted him and asked him if he knew that tattoo man he was uh, throwing these parties with was a grapist, right? He told me he was so sorry and that he had no idea even cried real tears really wow this is crazy you guys now uh, she says today they gave them 50 years because he also was mm, doing the same thing graping women so this has to be the same guy who got convicted with lawrence who happens to be ryan savage how could you be friends with somebody that's doing these type of things and then come to find out years later, Ryan is the one that was also convicted of graping women along with Lawrence. Wow. So this right here is crazy, you guys. Wow. Let me read that again. Today they gave him 50 years because he also was graping women. I stood up to people for him because I thought it wasn't true because I knew who the real grapist was. And I want to apologize to anyone I ever offended for not believing your truth. Today, my chest just feels heavy. My own friend set me up to be uh, rugged and graped fresh out of high school. Damn, Lawrence. Now, when it comes to Ryan Savage, according to court documents, on November 13, 2013, Wisdom Moore went to the defendant Ryan Savage's house for a tattoo. After receiving her tattoo, she puffed a junt that was given to her by Ryan Savage and Lawrence Interrarity. Miss Moore noticed that the junt tasted different. Once she left the location, she examined the junt and found a white substance inside of the junt. The next day, she confronted Lawrence and Arari about the junt. Uh, and while being confronted about the junt, uh, Lawrence and Arari messaged Ryan Savage and discussed how they had been caught uh, lacing the junt. Wow, yeah. With many of these cases going way back to 2013, the evidence states this. On October 12th and 13th, 2013, text messages between Lawrence Interrarity and Ryan Savage discussed getting a female to drink who does not wish to drink. They discussed making her drink and she will only get a tattoo if she drinks. See, these were the stipulations with this free tattoo. Wow, so much for free, huh? On October 17, 2013, they discussed getting a female to drink and whether they have made the drink too strong. On October 20th, 2013, they discussed getting female sloppy drunk and needing the girls to drink before they can have intercourse. The pair discussed separating girls into different parts of the house. Wow. On November 14, 2013, kick messages between Lawrence and Rarity and Ryan Savage discussed getting them to drink how many cups and what flavor or drink they are using on these victims. Wow, yeah. So they have all the evidence against these guys and these guys really thought they were gonna get away with these crimes, which they didn't. They're saying that Lawrence and Rarity uh, has been recorded 
getting hands and feet, elbows and toes put on him, uh, all because of the crimes he was convicted of, taking advantage of young girls and women while he was out in the free world, as they call it, in the prison system. And a lot of inmates aren't taking too kindly to Lawrence's crimes of taking advantage of women and young girls with these lace drinks him and his homeboy Ryan Savage used as a tool just to grape and these young ladies. One of the young ladies who was victimized by Ryan Savage and Lawrence and the Rarity spoke out and she attended the trial. She had this to say. She said, I learned that these men did this to multiple women. It was a pattern. None of us girls knew each other. We all come from different backgrounds and we all were different ages, but we had the same story. Trial was very hard for me, learning about information I had never known about before. Having to relive what happened was so hard. These men deserve to be exposed, to be blasted. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Be careful when you go out. Pay attention to your surroundings and always have a friend with you. Pay attention to red flags if something doesn't feel right. Listen to your gut. I was lucky enough to not have been graped, but some of the other ladies unfortunately did not get the same outcome. As for me, I have to endure this pain and trauma they experience for the rest of their lives. What happens in the dark comes to the light and evidence doesn't lie. We waited 11 years for this day and I thank God for hearing my cry. For so many years, this was a huge step in my healing process and words can't express how happy I am. My life has never been easy, but this situation has shown me that I can overcome anything. To the parents out there that's always putting your children first, Believe them when they say something happened to them. I always create a safe place for your child. I didn't have that, and if I did, I could have gotten justice sooner. Wow. Now, that's very, very, you know, uh, fortunate that this young lady, you know, uh, didn't get victimized. But obviously, she was almost victimized uh, by these two defendants. And she's telling a story as, you know, she got away just in time, right? Before this even happened to her. And obviously that was that uh, story that I told earlier where the young lady said she had got away. Now, according to reports, some of these witnesses were flew in from different cities because, you know, uh, since 2013 was a long time that this had been going on. I'm pretty sure these uh, women and you know uh, moved around different places so some of them had to be flown in right and uh, they started building this case back in 2014 and there were phones with text messages in them talking about uh, taking advantage of these women uh, with these mixed drinks and uh, they also found uh, DNA evidence inside some of the females now, that's crazy, you guys, when they went and got these uh, kits done on them after the incident happened, right? Some of these women still had residue of the DNA from these grapists inside of them. Wow. So they know that they were cooked from the get-go. I mean, it was just a matter of time before uh, Ryan Savage and Lawrence Inerarity got caught by law enforcement. And in a shocking revelation, these guys are uh, lucky that they're saying that a lot of these cases were over 10 years ago and it's past the statute of limitations there in Georgia, right? So nothing could be done about it. Now, that's kind of crazy, you guys, being that a lot of these uh, states are expanding the years, right? Uh, that, you know, people can be charged with stuff like this, right? Uh, given the nature of what's going on with Puff Daddy, the diddler, right? You see people going back as far as the 90s there in New York with those cases in L.A. and stuff being filed. So even though Lawrence Inerarity and Ryan Savage were only convicted of uh, violating one woman, right? After all those 
uh, different allegations that were brought against them by several multiple different women with all having the same story on how it happened. You know, uh, that life sentence should cover all these victims as it seems. In a viral video making this tour around the internet right now, showing Lawrence and Rarity getting the feats and beats put on them there by inmates in a DeKalb County jail. I think they're gonna have to move these guys to uh, PC to uh, protective custody because being in general population is not gonna work because once these guys, these savages, these monsters hear about, you know, uh, uh, Lawrence and Ryan's crimes against women, right? And, you know, being that a lot of these inmates could be related to some of these women, these guys are going to have a hard life in prison, you guys. And I do mean life, because that is the exact sentence that was given to both of them. Life in prison. With those emails from 2013, I'm pretty sure that victim was the one uh, who said that she got away and found out because she kept a little piece of that junk. And she took it back with her and tried to, you know, uh, examine it the next day. And when she did examine it, she found that white powdery substance inside of that junk. And they used that same evidence and in court and trial against these defendants. Uh, Ryan Savage and Lawrence Inerarity were cooked. And that evidence from 2013 of... Uh, Peso Montana and Ryan Savage talking in email about how that one victim got away after smoking that junk with her and not being able to take advantage of her. That came back to haunt them. And now they're spending the rest of their life in prison. So y'all get in the comments section and let me know what y'all think about this sick, twisted, and demented ordeal. And until the next time, this is OG Jacario TV with the latest in rap, hip hop, celebrity, and urban news. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You're watching the Rundown Podcast. I appreciate everybody for spending with me. I appreciate all my subscribers for sliding with your boy every time. And say, man, hey, man, hey, man. Keep in that like button, keep in that subscribe button. And look, turn on post notifications so we can slide whenever I get the drop. You already know what it is, man. It's deep in the booter, her, you hear me? And guess what? I'm gone.